Now let's apply the sociological theory of structural functionalism and later social conflict theory to our discussion on social stratification. So with these structural functionalists, every social pattern has some type of beneficial consequence for society, otherwise it wouldn't exist. So do we need inequality based on class and income? You bet, they'd say. So this comes from Kingsley Davis and Wilbur Moore. This is the Davis-Moore thesis paradigm. So I think you agree with this, being that we live in a capitalist country and we do promote education as a way to climb the social ladder. So they suggest that uh, social stratification has beneficial consequences for the operation of society. The more functionally important an occupation is, the more rewards we attach to it. So let's think about a doctor. Doctors are very important right now. We're in the midst of a coronavirus pandemic, so we need our medical experts more than ever. So the average doctor might make about $200,000 a year. Now, would you say janitors are important when it comes to functionally important positions? Absolutely. Don't we need janitors to make sure things are sanitized and hygienic? But would you pay janitors the same amount of money you pay doctors? Probably not. Furthermore, if janitors made $200,000 a year, I think everybody would drop out of college and just become a janitor. I mean, would I still be a college professor when I could make a lot more money being a janitor? So the more functionally important the position is, the more rewards we attach to it. Think about the sacrifice that goes into becoming a doctor. You have to go to school for 14 years beyond high school. You have to sacrifice your social life so that you can study very hard. Uh, the education that you receive in medical school is very expensive. And then there are levels to it. You have your first four years and then you have two years of residency and uh, another year of intern and then your specialty and so forth and so on. So it takes time to become a doctor. If you want people to embrace those challenges, if you want them to make those sacrifices, you got to make it worth uh, the price of admission, so to speak. So you got to make it worth the journey. So you obviously give them more rewards than you would, let's say, someone as a janitor who might not go to college for any number of years and doesn't necessarily have to sacrifice a social life to become a janitor. It doesn't mean that janitors aren't important, but if we were to rank them in, in, in terms of priority, you probably would rank a doctor a lot higher. Here's my final uh, point on that. Doctors can do the work of a janitor. They can operate on someone, put down a scalpel, pick up a mop, and clean up the operating room. But can a janitor do the work of a doctor? Can they put down a mop and pick up a scalpel? I don't think so. And I don't think many of us will want our janitors operating on us. So the final point on this is that unequal rewards are key to a more productive society. Now, does that mean they believe that inequality is good for society? No. But when we have unequal rewards, if we offer bonuses to workers, if they meet the company goals, not everyone's going to get that bonus, only the people who have worked harder. So by dangling that carrot of a bonus, it makes people more productive.